Walt jumbled to success, but the boxmaster reported the following incident. Beautiful blossoming vines had covered the deck and bulkheads in Loading Bay 6. Two workers had bent down to take a better look at the flowers, and the vines had devoured their faces before strangling them. The bay was then sealed and purged. If magical flowers appear in your room, please don't bend down and sniff them. They will eat your face. All right, let's, let's, let's continue. Oh, there's some goods here at least. Ship's log. Is this the first time we've seen a log? Hold on. The ship's log is encrypted, but the last entry was written in Gothic. I, Inquisitor Uten Hall, captain of the black ship Monarchia Bane, write the record off for the eyes of any faithful servant of the Emperor who, or who may chance to read it. My vessel dutifully departed Terra to collect the Imperium's rightful types from its loyal worlds and then to return to the Segmentum Solo with thousands of psychos in our holds. Our mission was proceeding smoothly, but shortly after our warp jump, the incident occurred. The main confinement cell was the source of the insurrection. It was holding a... It was the holding site for a especially dangerous passenger who possessed high psychic potential was known to incite in disobedience in others. I do not know how he was able to free himself or how he summoned the forces of chaos to abet him. His psychic outburst spread rapidly across the entire vessel, sending other passengers into a frenzy and causing them to attack my acolytes. I have given the order for the passengers to hold passenger holds to be purged and activated the automatic intruder elimination systems, but I have no doubt that this measure will be unsuccessful. Not wishing to surrender to the, mon the monarchy's bane into the hands of these deranged mutants, I've set course to the orbit a nearby planet at a slight de deviation. Sooner or later, the deviation will result in the ship drifting out of orbit and crashing into the planet's surface. Keep the faith and exterminate any mercy in your soul. Yikes. That's just big yikes right there. But good on him. He fought to the very last moment and then let... The rock is there place. money to be made? My success was inevitable. Oh. Minus 50% if the wear is heretical. Hmm. That's what happened. That was the, the boss fight then, I guess. No other place in here? Wait. Nope, wait. Why are we going the long way? Where are you going? Where, where are you going? <laughs> I always get the job done. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. But that's not... Keep your wits about you. I wanted to... I wanted to... Well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. Come on. <laughs> Oh, wait, where's this taking us? This taking us, ooh. Oh, was that? Oh, that was the, oh, okay, cool. Good way home. Yay. <laughs> Let us be gone. Well, we have made sure... Oh, Lord Captain, this is Voxmaster Vigis Suri Ototonman speaking. I hope your heroic expedition was success. What will be the further instructions? The machine spirit of this vessel is dead and defiled. It should be sent to the Omnisai in a proper nuclear funeral rite. Yep, bombard the vessel and let the dead follow the dead. As you wish, Lord Captain, the power of our main battery should be enough to penetrate the glacier and evaporate the vessel completely. It should be. I reckon if we were to take anything from that, it would literally cause mayhem on our ship. Like, that is inviting. It takes one little spore to create a mushroom. Successful spore, mind you, but it does. The orgas have detected the remnants of an ancient mining ship that crashed on the planet. It looks like it was carrying equipment and settlers to a new mining site. Searching the ship might prove useful, but it carries certain risks. Well, let's have a search. The search team was able to retrieve the last surviving extractium from under their debris. They suffered no losses and returned to the ship triumphant. Nice. That's good. That was pretty awesome. 
Wait, actually, hold on a minute. Oh, there's pastel. Never mind. I've got plenty of pastel. I would say plenty. But I've got, you know. I've got pastel. It's pretty much what I'm saying. Explored this? Apparently not. Warp jump was a success, but the boxmaster reported the following incident. Beautiful blossoming vines had covered the deck and bulkheads in loading bay six. Two workers had bent down to take a better look at the flowers, and the vines had devoured their faces before strangling them. The bay was then sealed and purged. If magical flowers appear in your room, please don't bend down and sniff them. They will eat your face. <laughs> oh, I'm not fighting those. <laughs> we'll stay well, 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 well away from the enemies of humanity. Uh, do we have any bugs still? We have 19... Okay. There you go. Have I been here? I clearly have. It's just that some of the worlds are not, but yeah, I have because I ran away. That's what, exactly what happened here. I saw the enemies. Ooh, I haven't put my void chip stuff on. But I basically seen the, en the enemies of humanity and was like, nope, we're out. <laughs> Uh, can I do it from here? No, I can't. It's one of these buttons. Ha! Um, we can upgrade our... Upgrade. Um, yeah, we can upgrade and still be okay. There's no components ready. Um... Good. I think. Yeah, I think we're good there. Right, void ship is what's equipped. Yes. Yes. 70, 80 points. The amount doubled against kinetic. Okay, I'm. Plus five pros, level speed along with long our team speed, so our team speed's better. Uh, 21 damage, 14. No, this one's better. Four. Didn't I, like, yeah. Wasn't there one that was really good and I was like, ooh, 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 we should get that one. No. No, it was that one that was the five. Let's do one more. No. Nope. Wanna definitely more health this time. Doesn't mean I wanna. Doesn't mean I wanna attempt. Fighting the enemies of humanity yet. The warp jump went smoothly enough, although many crew members reported strange incidents while they were asleep. 
They sensed someone approaching them and laying a hand on their forehead. And then the hand seemed to pass through their skin, through their skull, and with tender motion sorted their jumbled thoughts into some sort of order. Oh my god, can someone please come do that to me? <laughs> that would be amazing, thank you. The Mahagos Pascal noted that the mysterious incident had allowed him to remember a few highly obscured tech rituals, which it seemed he had never studied in the first place. <laughs> so we're gonna go here, make it more unsafe. Less safe, but not safe. The vessel's confessors report discontent among their flock. During the traditional sermon before departure, a ritual chandelier hung chandeliers hundred candles were snuffed out at once the missionaries attribute this incident to an open ventilation staff but the voidsmen noticed it and are whispering about an ill omen fearing the woes that may that may soon come uh, i'm going to sanctify all chambers of the void ship one more time the holy procession is full accordance with the echo of i still can't say this word echo lissarchy echo sarchy echo searchy Eccle, eccle something. Eccle something. I can't say it. Um, litigur, oh my god. Lit it, it, it's, it's spreading. <laughs> litig, no, litig, litigur, no, litigal. Canon. Rekindled the faith of the voidsmen's hearts and renewed their belief in the god emperor's benevolent power. The whispers subsided and the crew is ready to face the potential dangers with courage and fear. Recongregators. Okay, we'll, we'll head that way. Ooh, unidentified void ship, too. I do like myself an unidentified void ship. Right. Adamantine. Got pastille. We don't have loads of adamantine, so there you go. I think adamantine is quite hard to come by. Let's go here. Let's see what this is. A starship that once traveled the galaxy is now suspended in a silent void like a gnawed carcass of a giant monster. And when the rogue trader's flagship approaches, the Boxmaster reports an incoming message. The colony of the Imperial Loyalists that made their home in the bowels of the ship welcomed the Lord Captain. Let us visit the colony. Let's do this. Okay. This is a warm welcome. Let us not dawdle. Welcome, your ladiness. Please, please come right in. Our chief says still agree. And you know what's creature gawking? Oh, I don't trust this at all. Quite reads. Left then there's pride. Brethren have already performed a requiem right here. Further examination is inadvisable. Thank you, Pascal. I was reading. The plate reads Lefanio's Pride, the name of Lefanio's services in your mind, the history of a family known from the Coronas expansion, invested all they had in a family ship. The ship perished in the warp on this maiden voyage. The Lefanio line never recovered from the crushing blow. I always keep my options open. Simple machinery and tools. Oh, looking for the boss. Boss looks like, yep, I was gonna say, this looks like the boss. Tired looking woman of intermediate age, clad in work clothes, breaks off from her task to greet you. She freezes momentarily, clearly unsure how to address you, and then simply. Your ladyship, please excuse me. I don't really know your name. Welcome to our little colony. May the light of the emperor be with you. And with us, my name's Retta Makasimova. I'm in charge here. Oh, this sounds... <laughs> Would you believe it? A well-spoken rabble. It is rather sweet in its own way. Go on then, amuse me. Tell me about yourself in this place. Oh, we just called ourselves Retta's crew, and this place is Retta's camp. That's it. We're recollegers, scavengers in common terms. 
She does not speak the word scavengers with any kind of disdain. On the contrary, there is dignity in her voice, the kind with which one would announce their affiliation with a respected guild or family. Tossing a glance at Pascal, she grimly adds, and our work here, and our work is all legal, even though your brethren have no liking for us. Pascal stares dispassionately at Reda with a hint of disgust. Evidently, he has not even considered the possibility that replying to this creature's words could be anything other than heresy. So what do you do here? Right now, we're gutting this old heap of junk. Slowly but surely, that's a rig college's life for you. They drop us off at some decrepit station or an ancient battlefield and we just sit here for years on end. We look for working tech or valuable materials or whatever else might be useful. If we find anything, we sell it to passing ships. Not the easiest jobs out there. These wrecks are chock full of all kinds of dangers, but I swear it on my plasma torch, it's an exciting one for sure. This little bird's got all kinds of bells and whistles. Most of the tech is dead, but we do find working pieces now and again. We spent two whole months clearing out this shaft we found. Finished just three days ago, actually. And we found this thing. Bit weird looking, but still functional. Retta's expression brightens a little bit. Perhaps your ladyship would like to buy this component from us. I'll bet that big ship you've got get plenty of use out of it. Pascal's vo box crackles to life and curiously he tells her, present the object, laywoman. But curiosity creeps into his voice nonetheless. I will buy the component. Well, isn't this something? The emperor himself must have smiled upon us. Redder makes a triumphant gesture. I mean, uh, thank you, your ladyship. You'll be pleased with the results. Her mood visibly improves. You know, your ladyship. I, I get the feeling she has that kind of, you know, you know your ladyship. <laughs> kind of embarrassing to offer you this, but over in that corner there, we keep them things we don't rightly understand or can't really use. You could send some of your people to check it out if you like. Clearly, you know more about this stuff than us. You might find something useful. You got your own ship? No, not even close. Luxury like that? You could count the recologists who got their own ship on one hand. An old worker's hand that got sucked into machinery to three times and slashed by a plasma cut twice. We fly with whoever most just taking our chances. Sometimes we itch a ride on the promise that we'll pay with what we find later. Other times we find some other means. Risky business, obviously. Five or so years back, a crew got dropped off at an abandoned station. But something wasn't right with their life support systems. Ship came back to pick them up two years later and found nothing but bodies. About 15 years ago, back before I had my first little one, a ship took three crews to a location and ran into pirates on the way back. The ships go out on expeditions for years at times, and so it was ages before anyone realised they were missing. And it was even longer before they remembered the scavengers. Plus, it took some time to find a ship that could check on them, pick them up. Long story short, all three crews had bought it. Yep. Can you tell me anything about this wreck? Not much. We're no eggheads. You know, we're manual labour. It's an ancient thing, pretty dangerous, and we don't really know much beyond that. Before we came here, some tech priests had done their own bit of gutting. I mean, ritual, ballad to the spirits and all that. That lot don't tend to leave a whole lot of valuables behind. It's true, but it's way too scary to go in before them. And hey, we dragged a dozen of their broken servitors out of the mines after. The carcasses smell awful, but you can pluck out a decent number of parts out of the servitors and sell them. Doesn't seem like there's anything nasty living inside the wreck now, but the wreck itself is barely holding together. You go a couple of modules from here and that's it. You won't take another step without fearing that a broken reactor might cook you alive, or a whole module might depressurize. Well, it's nothing we haven't handled before, so we're having a poke at it, but we don't have a clue what this ship is or who it belonged to. I see you take pride in your trade. Sure do. It takes skill and luck and a good head on your shoulders. We risk our lives every day crawling on top of these old buckets and sometimes goes wrong. We die and by the scores sometimes. One moment we're here, the next we're kind of, we're gone. Kind of like worker ants. You know what, your ladyship, our job also has something, how should I put it, uh, poetic about it. I hope you don't judge me too harshly and don't take it as insolence, but some people, even big people like you, think too highly of themselves. Let's say your ship hops into the warp someday and does not bow out of it in time. And around a thousand years later, another gal like myself, who needs to feed the free ankle biters somehow, will be rifling through its remains, looking for anything good. It's just how nature of things. Each of us comes and goes, but the way the world works stays the same. We all have our lot in life, and mine just as good as any other. She likes to talk. You are amusing, little monkey. Your life is short than a moth's. 
and you spend it digging around in carcasses of dead, malevolent metal. But you speak of eternity and the stars. I like that. It is like seeing starlight reflected in a puddle. Nonsense. There are those who are great and those who are nothing. That is just the nature of things. If you say so, your ladyship. I'm a simple woman living a simple life. I'm in simple thoughts, and if I happen to blow out some bunkum, that's just because I'm not that bright. I can take you from this place. It's not safe here. Sooner or later, it will drift somewhere or so remote that nobody will ever find you again. Ah, uh, but this this is our old livelihood, your ladyship. You take us from here, and we're, what are we going to do? Sit in some old, slaving away. Here, yeah, we've got our own colony, our own operation. Now, this is our path, and we won't stray from it. I see. Your ladyship. Reda falters as if flustered by her own nerve. Please don't take this as insolence, but it's not like I have much choice. Not often that we get well-stocked ships around in, and we could certainly use more provisions and some warm clothes. If it's something you would be willing to provide, we would gladly barter for it, with whatever we can dig up inside this here ship. It's just respectful of a fair trade. She bows slightly before stepping aside. Did we? Yeah, I was going to say, okay, can we trade then? I don't know if I can trade. Hold on. Hey, ship. What brings you here? Oh, I thought we could trade. Maybe we can... Maybe I don't have anything to trade yet. That's how it's done. Yeah, I'm wondering if we don't have prize. Oh, check out the visitors over him. Basically, it's a whole big ship then. I mustn't have anything she wants or needs. So I am going to have a... Kind of a dander around. Do you not struggle to carry the burden of all your years, Grey Warrior? Will your hand not eventually betray you in combat? Youth has vigor on its side. But age has knowledge. I'm sure even a long-lived Xenos must understand the importance of experience. I always have a backup plan. Okay. I thought maybe we would have had like a... A shop there. But maybe I didn't have any provisions that she needed. She said she needed clothes and such. So maybe I just didn't have it. Or maybe now it's going to be on that, you know... A Vox notification from an auger crew drowns out the usual noise in the bridge. An Imperial vessel, the Dark Piercer, and its escort ships are headed out your way. Your archives make no mention of either the ship or its owner. As you consider your course of action, the ship's captain contacts you first, introducing himself as a pilgrim. The captain greets the rogue trader courteously and offers to purchase any information you might have on crystal floggies and deposits. I'm going to ask why the pilgrim needs floggies. Captain Corsa's laugh that echoes from the forth from the Vox. Flogiston is part and parcel of many different aspects of life in the Imperium. Exactly as customers are going to use it, it's none of his concern. Or that the Pilgrim promises that the Flogiston will be used for the good of humanity. Well, that's good for me. Pascal becomes visibly animated at the mention of the Flogsters. Because, like, we do have a little bit. Um... For indifference to the prospect of a deal with the shadowy individual, the Magos nonetheless re recommends you find out more about the Fluxton deposits. Your own protectorate would benefit from the knowledge. Just Argentus sincerely believes the words of the pilgrim, a cowl or a golden aquila, are no prerequisites for him being a true servant. If the captain sincerely wants to help the Imperium, perhaps by his own methods, there is nothing questionable about extending a helping hand. Oh no, why does a captain call himself Pilgrim? Captain admits he has not always done the right thing in his life, but he once beheld the blessed of the Emperor himself and has followed a special path of service to him ever since. That is the path he now treads as a Pilgrim. So what will, what will we have in return? Pilgrim has been exploring the Corona's expanse for years and knows many of his secrets. He promises to let you in on intriguing rumors that may be of interest to someone with your skills and capabilities. That's not enough. 
It looks like the captain of the Dark Piercer is unsurprised by your reaction. He is willing to pay in gold and securities for any information on the flock system. Okay. Uh, valuable information. The captain of the... Like, did he take all of it? Is in the best of spirits. Uh, in gratitude for your invaluable help, he sends you a small box containing ancient maps and documents. They appear to speak of certain imperial world lost many centuries ago. But in a somewhat conspiratorial tone, the pilgrim relates a story about the standoff between two Xenos fleets, which he was told by an acquaintance. The person in question, sadly enough, died at the hands of the Inquisition before they were able to pass on the coordinates for the crash site of one of the Xenos ship. However, the pilgrim knows for a fact that the vessel met its demise on an ocean world. Okay. I only took two, so that's fine. Okay, that was interesting. That whole bit. Like I said, I am trying to make my way to the Kiava Gamma. Uh, which, of course, I have no idea. It... So that's where I'm heading. I'll make it just mildly safe. Enemies of humanity have been spotted aboard the ship. Warp beasts have enthralled the crew in charge of one of the macro cannons and massacred these who resisted the heresy. The Lord Captain is their only hope. Well, that sucks. No. <laughs> okay. The rotator and retina will personally go and face these contemptible foes. Of course we will. Way I see it, I'm getting XP for it, so it's fine. <laughs> right, hopefully, this time Argenta comes with. We'll make sure. To top, okay. Or get left in the dust. Oh, did you have to? Oh wait. Well, just on that thought of, do we have? We don't really have money in terms of grenades. Whoever should use these. Like I don't. I, my problem is, is I don't understand them, and I'm that type of person. If I don't understand something, I don't touch it. I haven't got new weapons for her for ages. Oh, let's let's deal with this dude first. I strike without fear or hesitation. Let the uh, this is the Argenta first then. We've got quite a few bad guys down here, so... Approved. The order is contrary to dogma. 
Your Xenos pet monkey. I understand your intent. <sighs> if I must. I am not your Xenos pet monkey. <laughs> Oh jeez, oh jeez. This is the, uh, this, uh, this, no. I just literally get like ricocheted. As the Emperor commands, I act. Strike is a prayer. I'll do it. I'm good that they're attacking each other Talk here, but I serve the ruinous powers. <laughs> Death to non-believers. Oh my gosh, where am I having to go? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um Victory is imminent. It will be done. I will do my duty. Indeed. Vengeance will be swift. I won't object to it. But of course, Lord Captain. He said, these guys hurt. Who, if not me? Ah! I'll make it happen. I won't object. I've done with this one. Get my extra I feel so... the power surging. I don't know if I can hit you from Let's here. Let's see first. to it. Yeah, I can. Nice. I'm proud of her. Chaos guides me. 
Stink of scorched flesh fills the air. My will be swift. If it serves your cause, this tedium is beneath me. <sighs> if I must, another soul slips beyond the veil. This is that. big guys are down. With the big guys being down, it's so much easier. We see them keep constantly throwing stuff at me. <laughs> Stab it! Tested tactics are the best ones. No matter the cost. Might as well keep hitting. It will be done. Going up here. My place is at the fall. It's gonna keep hitting. We're just gonna go, Abelard. Abelard, tank in time! <laughs> That's not the Seneschal's job. That's a pity. <laughs> At your back and forth. Focus, Van Kalox. Focus. Everyone, step aside. I won't do that. Really annoying. I just want you to, you know. Charge at him. Get me a target. Trying to. But you Fine. Don't run at him. Go very, very slowly. And then bonk him. Excuse me while I put some of my team out. <laughs> If it serves your cause, I deal death with my hands. I'll make it happen. If as good as done. here but she should be able to wait is this dude dead or alive 
I think he's actually dead, but he's standing up. Another soul slips beyond the veil. I'm actually very confused right now. As the Emperor commands, I act. Rookies, Power damn it. in the will of the righteous. I'll do it. Sorry, Avalon, but you're fine. <laughs> oh, they're fine. Okay, shall we leave? Do I need to do anything else here? Heretics don't live. <laughs> okay. I'm literally on my way. To Kiavagamo. We are almost there after how many videos? Oh god, unknown ships. A violent battle is unfolding before the rogue trader's eyes. Patrol ships from the quarter fleet are tearing apart two small Adari vessels. Once they are finished with them, the voice ships give chase after the first. Already damaged vessel, clearly with the intention of destroying it as well. Seeing the last ship's impending death, Juliet calls out to the Lord Captain, her voice trembling slightly. Only the rogue trader's interventions can save her kin. She's gonna hate me. I'm not interfering. As if guided by the Emperor's hand, the voice ships adorned with the tour the coat of arms around the Xenos. Deadly salvos are up from their cannons and pulverize the tiny Adari vessels into lifeless debris. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I am trying to be like full emperor humanity. What the humanity? I'm sorry. This planet devoid of even the most primitive forms of life. However, the crew has made quite strange discovery in mirror lying right in the center of a huge crater, a completely ordinary mirror in a frame, by all appearance in pristine condition. Ugh, destroy it immediately. The crew blasts the crater, raising a cloud of dust that blocks the auger array. Confirmed the mirror's destruction is impossible for the time being, but it could not have survived such a powerful explosion. Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> I feel awful, but at the same time, you know, I am a noble who I, you know, she's here because I allow it, you know? A vigilant member of the Orga crew has detected a small Xenos vessel drifting through the void. The ship is unpowered and shows no sign of being crewed. We're going to send that fortune shuttle. Squad boarded the vessel without issue. Corrosion has laid waste to the ship's systems, which led to the death of the entire crew. The interior is full of Adari corpses. No weapons were found on board, and the dead Xenos, judging by their clothing, were not part of any warrior cast, merely the crew of a now defunct ship. Xenos Juliet claims to have recognized the symbol of the dead Adari's clothes. They were civilian refugees from the craft world Kradar. That's what I mean. I do not get me as Chrissy Tina would be like, I want to save everyone. Let's 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 all hug and be friends. But uh, me as Titania von Shire, Titania von Shire is of nobility. She is for humanity and she's already made some questionable, you know, decisions. Um, <laughs> So, yikes. Christine! I'm gonna save it and do some space battles with our new and improved ship. It should look slightly improved. Unless it's, you know, the enemies of humanity, and then we are screwed. Regardless of what happens, we are screwed. I'm also freezing. <laughs> it's so cold in here. 
Hello, the Drakari have blocked some of your flagship's posts using an unknown Xenos power. Your crew will regain control of the post in several rounds. Great. We should be okay. There's only two. Rude. Rude. Well, that was just rude. We're so close. Meow. But they're always destroying my torpedoes, but at least they're not destroying me, right? I mean, it's slightly in. Oh, that. We're okay, though. I think we might get some damage here. Oh, they're like skimming us. Rude. <laughs> Let's 
get rid of these. But we still have to deal with these then. <laughs> Now, I don't think we want to, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we want to. Generator. Ooh. Interesting. I don't know what they are. That's a cool looking star, though. Oh. Mine one has been catalogued. Oh. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Whoops. Our Yuliet's going to hate me. But, you know, it is what it is. Can I go here first? I'm going here first. That night, the Lord Captain and some of her crew were awakened by beautiful music. Oh, we've had this one. The sound seemed to caress their very minds until they realized that the source was not their own, was the, but their own bodies. While their teeth were chattering out at staccato, their tendons were being plucked like strings by unseen hands, and the invisible breath flowed through their bones, turning them into a mournful flute. The illusion ended, but for a long time afterwards, every movement made their hearts stutter in fear. Was the orchestra about to strike up once more? That, I think, is the most scariest. I think for me it would be you know just to have via wake up and like i don't know how the sensation would feel but like just to wake up and feel like you're but oh no do you know what thinking about it no 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 let's not think about it but that's something i don't have a lot of is promethean Oh, this looks like an inhabited world. The Hive City. Then chills pride hides are oozing noxious haze veined with soft forest streaks. The Promethean fumes from the gigantic distilling cauldrons located beyond the temperatured shields. Vast, endless deadlands littered with spots of Promethean stations and refineries separate the colossi of Rock Creek and Adamantine with its crown of gargantium spires. The heat of this system's star has turned this world into a boiling but lucrative gland within the body of the House of Chorder Protectorate. It's hard to tell what's more impressive, the grotesque grandeur of this place or its extreme toxicity. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know some people like that. It's hard to, yeah, they, yeah. Are they impressive? Who knows? I don't have any more. I don't have any more. But now we're going. I will make it safe. 
There you go. We have arrived, finally, at the Kiava Gamma. 